all Christians came to know our Lord Jesus Christ because of hearing the gospel. However, many Christians have also come across something such as known as the gospel plus, which is salvation depends on not just the finished work of our Jesus Christ on the cross, but also depends on something more and something more commonly known as the work, the work. The good works could include, for example, perhaps a visit to the Holy Land at least once in a lifetime or yearly as a yearly pilgrimage or something that commonly that we have added on top of the gospel itself. And um, I was just talking to one of our sisters here and talking about the uh, water baptism, confirmation, and some of these are the teachings that subsequently have so-called, I would use the word added, but something that is based on the scripture, but it depends on the interpretation of the people. Sometimes, some Christians will even say that they will, unless they are being blessed by the Pope or by the Bishop or by someone that is in authority, Otherwise, they would not have considered being blessed. All these are known as, I call it, the gospel plus. In the letter to the Galatians, Paul urges the Galatians believers not to be swayed by such gospel plus something, but to believe that salvation is by faith and faith alone. So before we continue, let's come before the Father God and ask that he will send his Holy Spirit to interpret his word for us and to convict our heart. So Father God, we truly want to thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sin. Father, we truly know that that is the only gospel, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of grace. Father, we ask that we will not be swayed. We will not believe. We will not preach anything that is altering the basic foundation of salvation by faith and faith alone. So Father, as we preach your word, pray that there will be no other words that is not from you will be speak forth or will be deposited into the listening ears of this your beloved shepherds, beloved sheep. So Father, we pray and ask this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Well, I actually have tried to promise that today the sermon will be a short one because we have a very important uh, game of Kahoot uh, later on and we have to dismiss from this place by about approximately 10.45. So uh, pardon me if I sometimes go a little bit faster and sometimes that um, I elaborate a little bit more than what I plan to. But whatever I couldn't cover today, that uh, we still have one more session on the book of or the letter to the Galatians. So the author, Paul, there is no debate on Paul being the author of the letter to the Galatians because he started the letter by naming that he is the writer of this particular letter. But to the question of the recipient, right, what the Bible actually have recorded for us is to the churches of Galatia. And this is where many, many scholars right, have been trying to debate, right, not the place, not the location of Galatia that is in modern day Turkey, but in terms of the so-called North Galatia or the South Galatia. I will not want to bother you with the detail of that. South Galatia is later on, as you will see in a map, that these are the cities that Paul have visited in his first missionary journey. And because of this debating, whether it is writing to the Northern Galatia, which is where the name Gaul, right, or Gaul, that uh, represent France, the people migrated from modern day France all the way to the Northern part of the Turkey, modern day Turkey itself, that, that is where the name Galatia and uh, probably at that time, it's known as Galatia, right? 
then that will be the determination of the date of writing. If it is writing to the North Galatia, then there will be one particular date. If it's writing to the South Galatia, there will be another date. But just to save you time, the last 100 years, most scholars have agreed that it is referring to the churches in the South Galatia. And because of that, the dates of writing, then it becomes to be as close as AD 48, just before Paul going to Jerusalem in the record of Acts chapter 15. And with that, that will be about AD 48, that about. And it will become the first letter that is being recorded in the Bible attributed to the Apostle Paul himself. But then there are a particular issue. All letters have certain issue itself, right? It must be situational. So the situation in that day is when Paul really feels so, so called urgent to want to write to the churches that he was the one who first set up, is to tell them that there is no other gospel. It's to tell them that there is an issue. After he visited there, some people coming up from Jerusalem claim to be from the original Jerusalem church itself, telling them that, yes, the gospel is about Jesus Christ, but just because Jesus is a Jew, so you have to become a Jew if you want to become a Christian. And you have to obey the law, the Mosaic law. And most importantly, right, the people will emphasize the work of the flesh that is circumcision itself. So that is the issue itself, right? So it's either just a gospel of grace or gospel of grace plus work. So there must be a group of opponents of Paul. I use the word opponents. That means after Paul have left, established a church, have left, and then there were some people coming over and start telling them that, yes, what Paul say is correct, but Paul did not get it firsthand. Paul was not one of the original 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, so he got it secondhand. And anyone that got a secondhand gospel, likely at that time, right, we all, all get it second, third, and probably many, many hands as we pass down. But at that time, that there was claim that only the people that is still remain in the Jerusalem, right, they are direct witnesses, witness the, the 12 disciples of Jesus, other than Judas, who hanged himself, the rest of the 11, and plus subsequently, Matthias and probably Paras, James, the brother of Jesus, all right, the half-brother of Jesus himself, become the head of the Jerusalem church. These people who come, we no need, they are being called as the Judaizers. They come and propose that the gospel of Jesus Christ is good, but not enough. You need to have something more. So these are known as the opponents, right, of Paul, the opponents of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is the background itself. Right, so this is the first missionary uh, journey of Paul. As you can see that he actually was based in Antioch and in one of the prayer meetings, he and Barnabas was being called to, set a, to be set aside. They land and go through a missionary journey and this is the area of Galatia. So this is the South Galatia itself, consists of mainly the four cities. From the Antioch, there is also another city known as Antioch, but this is known as the Pisidian Antioch versus the Antioch, which is here at the Syria Antioch itself. So the main idea of uh, this letter is that Paul introduces himself to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Why? Why did he need to stress that? Because the people, the opponents come after him will say, no, Paul doesn't have the authority as an apostle. Right, because an apostle have two requirements. One is the sent out one we are all familiar with. The other one is eyewitnesses. See, Paul did not see Jesus according to this group of Judaizers. But we all know in the book of Acts, as Paul was zealous for the Mosaic law, the Old Testament law, he was being going out to want to arrest all those who want to believe in Jesus Christ and the resurrected Jesus appeared to him. So Paul was also known as an apostle because he had seen the resurrected Jesus himself. So 
The people attacking him to say that he is not an apostle, Paul said, I am an apostle. Later on, you will see that in his letter, he keeps stressing it. In fact, he spent two chapters, chapter 1 and 2, to defend his position as an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation, also known as gospel of grace, not work. And he is shocked that the Galatians, after believing him, because Paul went for the first missionary journey, he preached the gospel, the people believed. He was shocked that after he returned back to Antioch, he heard that there was someone coming after him, gone after him, and, and so-called teach the wrong gospel. So, and the people begin to say, oh, yes, believing in the gospel, not enough. I also need to go through circumcision. So Paul said, I was shocked that how come you all can come out of being slavery and then now you want to go back to become the slave of the flesh itself, right? And they are turning from the grace of Christ. So the demarcation of these passages for today is very short, just 10 verses. Verse 1 to 5, the salutation, greeting. Because in the olden days, the way they send letter is different from today. Today, you all don't send snail mail. You all don't even send by post. You are sent by email. My generation, we still send by post, send in a letter. But the way we put our letter is that we put the address C in front and then we sign at the end of the letter. But in those days, that because they are being rolled up as a scroll, the messenger, the postman will, will sort of unroll and just read up the top. Oh, Paul, the so-called the center. Oh, the address C the churches of Galatia. So the salutation. And then finally, the second part is a summary of the issue. Paul always in his letter, the first few verses, he sum up what he's going to cover. It is probably he knows that sometimes people don't even have patience to read through six chapter of his letter. So in the first few lines, in five verses, right, he already covered the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are just take two main points, the apostle and his gospel of Christ. And then the second part is the issue of the gospel plus and his warning and his warning. So just let me go through the, these uh, first five verses and then the next five verses itself before right, uh, we sum up the lessons that we can learn from this. Paul and apostle, not from man, nor through man. So why did he have to say that? Because his opponents say Paul was being appointed, was being taught by the apostle, by the disciple of Jesus. He learned it from Peter. He learned it from James. So Paul said, no, I'm an apostle, not by man, not being laid, so-called by the, the head of the church, Jerusalem church, Jesus, I mean, sorry, James, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, not by man, not true man but through Jesus Christ himself. But through Jesus Christ himself. And his appointment as the apostle, not only by Jesus Christ himself, is also by God the Father. By God the Father. So that is his credential. Because they were, the opponent was attacking him, that he doesn't have that. And God the Father is the one who raised him from the dead. I'm going to cover that later in, in the subsequent verses and all the brothers who are with me. Again, Paul is trying to say, I'm not the only one. All the brothers was with me. They all agree that I have pe the teaching is correct. Because in the, Judas, um, in the Jewish law, one person is say, I'm an apostle, nobody will believe unless you have another witness. You have another one to stand as a testimony. Right? So at least two. So Paul said, not only two, all the brothers are with me. They say that, yes, I'm an apostle. Apostle appointed by God the Father, apostle appointed by Lord Jesus Christ himself to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God. That is a generic greeting. Paul actually have so-called integrated the Old Testament greeting, shalom. That the Jewish greeting is always shalom, peace. And Paul say, now grace from our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace and peace has been the greeting itself who gave himself for our sin to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father 
to whom be the glory forever and ever. This is just one verse. The whole gospel of salvation is there. Why? Because first of all, you look at it that he say that he is the one who gave himself for our sins. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. First point of the gospel of Jesus Christ is you must acknowledge that you have sinned. If you don't acknowledge you have sinned, then you don't need a savior. So for our sins, all have sinned. Second, Jesus Christ has been given by God the Father for us. Jesus Christ is the one who delivers us from the bondage of the present evil age. Jesus Christ himself is the one that forgives our sin. Everything is being covered over here from the present evil age and according to the will of God the Father. That Jesus Christ did not come. Yes, he is God, but he has submitted himself to the authority of Father God by saying that I come because my Father has sent me. So the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation, the gospel of grace is from God the Father. So that is the gospel itself. He summed it up, but afterward, he is going to use chapter 3 and chapter 4. Two chapters to explain this again, which you are going to read from Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday onwards. I am astonished. I am shocked to hear that you are so quickly. First, you believe in what I have preached. And then the next moment when someone comes into the in the pulpit, and then you change your mind. Someone just say that, yes, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus died for your sin, but no, not enough. You have to do something more. So Paul said, I'm shocked that you turn away from the grace of Jesus Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one. There is only one gospel. There is no other gospel. I call it gospel plus because we are more familiar with the gospel, but sometimes we know there are some teaching of the plus something. And later on, Paul said, the plus is the work of the law. So there are people who come after me who trouble you and went to distort, pervert. Actually, the word is, we all thought that the word pervert is only referring to sexual behavior. No, Paul actually used this word, perverted the gospel, distorted the gospel added many things, and that many things itself is so serious that actually distorted the gospel. But even if we, the other brothers, or even an angel right from heaven, if they ever preach anything other than what I have already preached, salvation is by grace, salvation is by faith, and faith alone, if someone add anything, let him be accursed. And the word "accursed" to us sound very normal, but if you use the colloquial language itself, damn him. Very serious. We don't normally say, "Ah, oh, you mean the Bible even use such a strong word? That is vulgar word, that is foul language. But Paul was so upset at these people. Why? Because they are so-called dragging the believers back into the bondage of the evil one. So Paul said, no, if anybody want to preach that, let him go to hell. He should go to hell. Not you. Because you have heard the gospel. There is only salvation by grace. Salvation by faith and faith alone. No one should add any other things. So even if we ourselves or angel to preach, let him be a curse. And he said it tw twice. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Paul was trying to say, if anyone just want to please people, yes, somebody say that gospel, good, but not enough. You need to add something. Okay, if I say something different, then I will antagonize the people. So I better obey the man and say something that is, we call it moderating. Somebody would not want to add certain things, change certain things. And Paul said, no, I cannot be pleasing man. I have to please God. I have to convey the same gospel. And to us, actually one very simple example is what I know. I could be wrong. I always wanted to go to the so-called the Three Self Church in China. Right? Times are running out for me to end. Right? And the people over there 
have said that God is just love. So everybody love, very happy. But they will never say God will judge. So if anyone just say one side of the gospel, they are distorting the gospel. So finally, let me just sum up the lesson itself, gospel. I need to summarize it for you because we don't have time to go through that. But throughout all the sermon that is on in this pulpit is about the gospel. All have sinned. Verse 4. Christ died and delivered us. Verse 1 and verse 4. Our sins are forgiven because Christ died for our sins. Our sins are forgiven. And God raised him from the dead. Is also in the so-called verse 1. God, the Father who raised him from the dead. So he died for our sin. He is the substitutionary death for us. And we are adopted as children of God. Beautiful. Just 10 verses, three times, he said, God the Father, God the Father, God the Father. We Christians are children of God. And then the other minor point is no turning to so-called gospel plus works, works of the law. Do not follow the false preacher. As I'm standing here, I am in fear and trembling. Because as I pray, I say that there is no such thing also come out from my mouth that would distort. And if I have misled you, God will hold me <coughs> for accountable. <coughs> and please God, I do not seek the approval of man. So who is Jesus Christ? That is the thing that you have to keep thinking and keep asking yourself. And I have already summed up the gospel. Not me, Paul, in one verse, verse 3. And the gospel of grace and salvation. What are the gospel plus? What are the plus that you have heard? Okay, there are many pluses, right? Okay, and since my sermon is being recorded, <coughs> you see, I'm trying to please men. Right, I'm also concerned that if I start giving you example, then people will say, let's debate. Right, who say that there is so-called purgatory? Who say there is such thing that, um, that uh, there are many, many other things that you have to so-called visit the Holy Land? Who say that you must see the relic that is being stored in the Vatican? Right, so these are the plus that you have been taught. Ask yourself, there are many plus. Not knowingly, some of us are added, but some of them are not as serious, but some of them are very, very serious. If I ever say, if you are not baptized, you will not be saved, damn to me. Because baptism is just the outward acknowledging of what you have already been saved. So can you imagine that there are some, all these teachings that may confuse you? So the application, to read and rooted in the word. Because everything has to come from the Bible itself. But unfortunately, the Bible is not, on one hand, easily understood. Because you need teacher to teach you. You need interpreter. You need to understand the grammar. But on the other hand, you have to start with from the Bible itself. Then you need to have a community of Christian believers. Because if you yourself, you also believe that what I believe is correct. So you need people to check and balance. And there's no other way to check and balance by your fellow believers. So that is the reason why we need to come as a community. As I preach, it's being heard. And they will check on me. You will check on me. And how are you going to check on me? The Word of God. So with this, I end today's uh, sermon so that I can move on. And uh, there is no uh, reflection song. We will go straight and um, into the so-called prayer and benediction. And then uh, we will go into the kahoot and the revision time. I call it revision. We call it a game, right, of the book of Isaiah. Father God, we truly want to thank you that you have given us the word, that the Holy Spirit has inspired Paul to write it down for us. It is so important that we hold on to the truth that salvation is by faith and faith alone. So Father, as we so-called meditate this, as we reflect that there is only one way the way that is from the reading of your word, rooted into your word, and being checked and being surrounded ourselves with Christian brothers and sisters. To be able 
to really walk in a way that will not be swayed to believe in gospel plus something else. We pray this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Let's stand and receive the benediction. May the grace of Father God and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the conviction, power, and strength of the Holy Spirit guide you on every step that you are taking. And with this from today until eternity.